Hello, I'm Holly and I'm going to be taking part in the TBR Spin game that the Book Bully and Freshly Read Reads are going to be hosting throughout this year. They're taking over from Kieran over at KD Books and someone else who I don't watch, I'm sorry, <laughs> I've forgotten the name already. When I came across KD Books TBR Tackle game. I really wanted to take part but I just ultimately never got round to it. But we're sat down here today because whilst I was watching the introduction video for the TBR spin game I was picking out my books and this is where I put them. I've decided that I'm going to go with all hardbacks. I'm going to try and do the whole game in the hardbacks that are on my shelves. There's not really any rhyme or reason to this, <laughs> to what I've picked out here. I just sort of went for ones that I'm quite intrigued to read but that I otherwise haven't put on my plans. I don't believe any of these are translated. I don't believe. None of them are short stories. None of them are poetry. So we have a really random bunch. They're not all lit fit. We've got some thrillers in here. We've got a bit of horror. I believe Reprieve is a horror. We have some romance, although literary romance. We've got sci-fi. We've got a classic up the top. So I have quite a random collection here. I don't really want to get them all out right now, <laughs> now that I've given them a place and <laughs> put them together. But what I will say is I didn't realise that at the end of that first video, because I was literally pulling these out as I was watching their video, um, I didn't realise that at the end of the first video they were going to give the January prompt and it was to read a book that has won a, a book prize. I realised that none of these have Possibly a couple of them have been nominated for like the Goodreads Awards, but I don't think any of them have actually won anything. I did a quick Google search for Animal because that's the one that I've heard the most about, but I couldn't find anything to suggest that it had won anything. I thought maybe Goliath might have won some sort of science fiction awards, but I don't know, I couldn't find anything. So I'm already going to have to knock one of these off the list and I've gone in search of anything on my hardback shelves. Again, it was really hard within my hardback shelves. I have a whole shelf of uh, like Booker and Women's Prize nominated books <laughs> on my paperback shelves, but within the hardbacks that was much harder. So I've, I've had to find one and I've got Ali Smith's How To Be Both. It was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize and the Women's Prize in the year that it was published. It won the Goldsmith Prize and another prize. So this is the one I'm going to try and get to. I've been meaning to try some of Ali Smith's writing. I know there are a lot of people that really hate her, uh, but equally she's so well known and like so well loved. And she's won so many prizes and been shortlisted for so many prizes that I still really want to try her books. So this will be my first one. And I think, at least of the ones that are on my list, it is the most acclaimed book. It's got the most nominations and the most prizes under its belt. So so there we go. Let me tell you a bit about it in case you don't know actually. How to Be Both is a novel all about art's versatility, borrowing from painting's fresco technique to make an original literary double take. It's a fast-moving, genre-bending conversation between forms, times, truths and fictions. There's a Renaissance artist of the 1460s. There's the child of a child of the 1960s. Two tales of love and injustice twist into a singularly singular yarn where time gets timeless, structural gets playful, knowing gets mysterious, fictional gets real, and all life's givens get given a second chance. To be honest, this sounds right up my street, so I'm hoping this is going to be a win. <laughs> I know, as I say, I know people who hate Ali Smith. I know people who hate fiction that involves art and psychology and philosophy. So, but I love those things. So, <laughs> we'll see. Okay, I originally said I wasn't going to tell you <laughs> about the books right now, but I will do. I'm sorry, I wanted to film with my glasses off because I'm trying to use the ring light and it just reflects really badly in my glasses. But I feel like I look at the camera like this <laughs> when I have my glasses off. So I will take take you through the book. So we've got a classic, we've got Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse 5, this is the 50th anniversary edition. It's a lovely cover but it does get fingerprints quite easily. And look at the lovely inside. So I won't go into detail because that is a classic, most people will know that one. We have Goliath by Tochi On Onyabuchi, which is 
sci-fi. I did just say that, didn't I? And I don't really know very much about it. I just knew that I am... Um, Kieran from KD Books was selling this and I want to try more science fiction because I do enjoy science fiction but I don't have very much on my shelves um, and this is a, you know, a slightly more diverse, you know, it's by, it's by um, a diverse author so I wanted to try something a bit different and not your classic white British males or white American males who are always writing sci-fi so that's on there. These Dividing Walls by Fran Cooper. This is one I randomly came across in a charity shop. I loved the cover. I was really drawn in. And then I really liked the premise of it. So as this is one that I'm going to imagine people haven't really heard of because I had never heard of this when I came across it. So I'm going to tell you about it. In a forgotten corner of Paris stands a building. Within its walls people talk and kiss, laugh and cry. Some are glad to sit alone while others wish they did not. A woman with silver blonde hair opens her bookshop downstairs. An old man feeds the sparrows on his windowsill and a young mother wills the morning to hold itself at bay. Though each of their walls touches someone else's, the neighbours they pass in the courtyard remain strangers. Into this courtyard arrives Edward, still bearing the sweat of a channel crossing. He takes his place in an attic room to wait out his grief. But in distant corners of the city, as Paris is pulled taut with summer heat, there are those who meet with a darker purpose. As the feverish metropolis is brought to boiling point, secrets will rise and walls will crumble, both within and without number 37. So there's that one. Then we have a Quake Amezes, You Made a Fall of Death with Your Beauty, and I have a lovely copy that my parents gave me. Um, again, everyone's heard of this one. It is romance, but I'm hoping slightly different, not just like soft romance. I've heard this is a bit more intense, so I'm looking forward to reading this. I had really wanted to read it last year. It's one I'm kind of saving for the summer. I feel it's going to be like a summer read, but I thought I'd put it on this because it's otherwise not on my TBR. We've got You Have to Make Your Own Fun Around Here by Frances Macken. Now, this is another one that I don't think many people will have heard of because I had never heard of it and whilst I don't think I'm necessarily a good judge of that because there are going to be plenty of books that I've never heard of I have literally never seen anyone on booktube talking about this at least the people I follow so anyway <laughs> so this is a 2020 publication because on the back it says title to look out for in 2020 as I do with so many of these books I found it in the Waterstones clearance sale and I quite like purchasing from that because I have found some absolute blinders that are just unrecognised books they're just ones that perhaps didn't have as much of a marketing budget or for some reason just didn't get the hype that other books did but they're still really good so this is another one that I found there so this is a funny poignant tale of youth envy and the dark side of friendship friends since childhood Katie Meave Maeve and Evelyn dream of escaping the tiny Irish town of Glenbruff. Outspro outspoken, pre unpredictable and intoxicating, Evelyn is the undisputed leader of the trio. That is, until an outsider arrives from Dublin and changes Glenbruff forever. Told from Katie's witty, quirky perspective, Frances Macken's outstanding debut takes a keen-eyed look at the delights and complexities of female friendship, the corrosive power of jealousy and guilt and the people and places that shape us, filled with unforgettable characters and fizzing with the voices of rural Ireland. Um, this is a vibrant story of three young women and their battle to leave the past behind. The first time Lauren Paling died by Alison Rudd. I originally thought this was going to be some sort of Groundhog Day type story, but I'm not sure. So this one says, Lauren Paling is born in the 60s and a child of the 70s. She is 13 years old the first time she dies. Lauren Paling is a teenager in the 80s, becomes a Londoner in the 90s, and each time she dies, new lives begin for the people who loved her, while Lauren enters a brand new life too. But in each of Lauren's lives, a man called Peter Stanning disappears, and in each of her lives, Lauren sets out to find him. And so it is that every ending is also a beginning, and so it is that with each new beginning... Peter Stanning inches closer to finally being found. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Body Taurus by Jane Rogers. Blurbed by Hilary Mantel. Penelope Lively. Marina Luca. I think I've got something by Marina Luca somewhere. Then anyway, again, not one that I've ever heard people talking about. But this is, when the rich die, their minds are stored digitally. In a private clinic in London, a maverick scientist is at work transferring these digital identities into the sleeping bodies of young volunteers. He offers the opportunity for wrongs to be righted, for fathers to meet grandsons, for scientists to see their work completed, for the old to enjoy all the delicious sensations of life again. But Luke will find that he can't control their willful behaviour, especially when they discover they are alive for a mere 14 days. 
Youth can finally be bought, but at what cost? So her novels, Jane Rogers' novels include Conrad and Eleanor, The Testament of Jessie Lamb, Mr Rose Virgins, Island and The Voyage Home. I don't think I've heard of any of those. And maybe the only one though. <laughs> Tenth Muse by Catherine Chung. I think, again, this is another one I got in a Waterstones clearance. So, from childhood, Catherine knows she is different and that her parents are not who they seem to be. That as she grows up and becomes a mathematician, she faces the most human of problems. Who is she? What is the cost of love? And what is the cost of ambition? On her quest to conquer the Riemann hypothesis, the greatest unsolved mathematical problem of her time, she turns to a theorem with a mysterious history that look, holds both the lock and key to her identity and to secrets long buried during World War II. Forced to confront some of the biggest events of the 20th century and rethink everything she knows of herself, Catherine strives to take her place in the world of higher mathematics, reclaiming the voices of the women who came before her whose love of the language of numbers connects them across generations. The Tenth Muse is a brilliant, involving novel asking questions about who gets to tell the story of intellectual endeavour and about those who lost everything during World War II. Reprieve. I feel like everyone's heard of this one. I've got one blood on it. It sprayed edges, not actual blood. Um, so this is a horror and this is about... April 1997, four contestants make it to the final cell of the Quigley House a full-contact haunted escape room made famous for its monstrosities. If the group can endure its horrors without shouting the safe word reprieve, they'll walk away with $60,000, joining the only other group in the house's long history to have won. But before they can complete the challenge, a man breaks into the cell and kills one of the contestants. Those who were present on that fateful night lend their points of view. Kendra Brown, a teenager uprooted from her childhood home after the loss of her father... Leonard Granton, a hotel manager caught in a series of toxic entanglements, and J.D. Charunusuk, an international student who came to the U.S. in search of his former English teacher. As each character's journey unfurl unfurls, deceits and misunderstandings fueled by obsession and prejudice are revealed, forcing all to reckon with the ways in which their beliefs and actions contributed to a horrifying catastrophe. A startlingly soulful exploration of complicity and masquerade, Reprieve combines the psychological tension of classic horror with searing social criticism to present a chilling portrait of American life. Blimey, this is a lot of books. Am I sure it's only 12? Uh, we've got Ex Libris by Ross King. Um, I came across Ross King as an author from his non-fiction, but this, to, I mean, I'm, I won't go into it too much, but this is, I think, a bit like um, a religious thriller, so in the in the sort of vein of... Um, the Angels game and Demons and... Angels and Demons? Dan Brown novels, which I always used to really love, so I picked this up in a charity shop thinking, let's try it. Um, and this one is set in the 17th century. What I think is a classic thriller, Two Wrongs, by Mel McGrath. This one came in a book box one year. In the city of Bristol, young women are dying in mysterious circumstances. The deaths look like suicides, but are they something more sinister? Honor is terrified that her daughter might be next, but as she looks for clues as to what really happened to the girls, she stumbles upon a link to a dark secret in her own past, one that she's kept from her daughter. Now Honor has the chance to avenge her child for the terrible events of years ago, but how far will she go to protect her daughter and the right, and right the wrongs done to her family? So, yeah. And then finally we have Animal by Lisa Tadeo, uh, which I think most people will have heard of. Mine says Waterstone exclusive on it. What makes it an exclusive? Do I have like an extra essay or something? Oh, a letter to the reader. Anyway. <laughs> so I think this is sort of in the sort of weird women vein. A haunting visceral novel of women surviving men, Lisa Tadeo has produced one of the most compelling anti-heroines in fiction. Seductive and relentless, Animal draws readers closer to Joan and the brutal mystery of her past, holding them captive until the very last page. So there we go. Now that I've actually taken through all the synopses, because I had kind of forgotten what these books are about, I have decided to replace You Have to Make Your Own Fun Around Here with How to Be Both. I think in tone, those are going to be the most similar. I think the rest of them are sufficiently different from How to Be Both that I'm going to keep them. I mean, the other one that I was contemplating was You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. But I think... Overall, I'm more intrigued to read this one than this one. So this one is going to go back on the shelf for a bit longer. When I have finished reading it, I shall tell you all about 
my feelings on Ali Smith and how to be both. Sorry, one final point. If you're joining in, I'm gonna leave the link, or if you'd like to join in, I'm gonna leave the link in my <laughs> description box so that you can go and watch the original video. I have obviously now spoiled it that you're gonna need a prize winner for this month. So when you're pulling together your TBR, <laughs> make sure you have a prize winner in it. <laughs> Thank you.